This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. This video is on climograph construction and discussing what a climograph is. Now this is to do with atmospheric science, climatology, and looking at Earth as a system because climate is one big system of processes that accumulate together to inform you about locations, average climates over or average weather conditions, which is daily, but counted up over an average of 30 years or more. So climate is a long-term prediction, long-term classification of the climate. And the climate includes both the average temperature, the high temperature, low temperature, daily temperatures, seasonal temperatures, and year-long temperatures based on the months in this graph and also the precipitation. So what moisture is coming out of the atmosphere falling back to ground? Is it sleet, snow, rain, or combination of all of them? Again, based on the months, based on the seasons, and also we can take from these climographs a whole bunch of geographical and scientific information about that location. So as you can see, we start off with a basic three axes graph. You've got the uh, two Y axes and one X axis. The X axis is the months of the year from January through December, the 12 months. And the Y axis, the verticals, are going to be our measurements or, or values in both temperature, which will be in Celsius or Fahrenheit, and also in precipitation, which will be in inches or millimeters. So you are given a data set of both precipitation and temperature. And these values are in a table. Now they can be graphed in this climograph and we're going to construct it right now. So we have our months of the year on the x-axis, so January and February. And let's say, for example, January, there was 150, let's say, millimeters of water or moisture or precipitation that comes out of the clouds over that month on average over 30 years 150 then for february it's 200 now how we draw this we draw this as a bar graph and we draw it up and we make sure we construct our axes accordingly to come to accommodate all of the data we have in our table from the lowest precip value to the highest precip value so we have 150 for january and 200 for february it looks like this and if we continue to complete our precip over the course of the next 10 months from March through December. You can add in the bar graphs and color them in if you want to, but based on the value in the table, you construct your bar graph accordingly for the months, and it should look something like this. Again, every graph is different with different values of precip, but it's gonna look like this, where you have a range of different bars in terms of how tall they are for the values, and then we can start to analyze the precip. So once you've graphed with the bar graphs your precip, you can work on temperature. Temperature will be in either Celsius or Fahrenheit, maybe occasionally in Kelvin, but that's kind of rare in general climate graphs. And you can start plotting your average temperature. Now this could be just your average temperature, or you could also plot your average high, your average low, and the, and the mean average temperature between the night and day. And you're gonna have your data set and plot your temperature on the graph as it is right there. Now for this case, I have drawn in the average, the average low and the average high for each month of this location. Now don't forget, a climate graph is for a certain location, it could be a city or a national park or some sort of location around the world. Generally, they are extremely good at telling you or giving you information about its location, not just on the precip or the temperature, but you can infer scientifically from this data, and you can infer the latitude, you can infer if it's a wet or dry season, monsoon, non-monsoon location, you can even, if the elevation is not stated, you can probably guess or have an idea of the elevation. Uh, it doesn't give you the type of precip, so the snow, but you can infer from the temperature. If you have a temperature that's below zero for a lot of the year, you can infer that if there's any kind of precip at this location, it would fall as sleet, snow, or potentially hail. Hail, again, would denote a different kind of cloud formation with updrafts and more extreme cumulonimbus clouds. But you can get a lot from this 
climate graph. You can also estimate and look at the seasonality in terms of temperature, the high and low, if there's a big difference. Maybe there is a more higher pressure or lower pressure situation going on with the atmosphere to create a large gap between the high and low temperature or a smaller gap between the high and low temperature. Again, these are all data sets and the graph really gives you a fantastic picture of what's happening during the course of the year at this location. And that's why we use climate graphs all the time to introduce both geography and atmospheric conditions and biomes ecosystems, why certain areas are built in, in places for anthropology, for history, for issues with flooding, construction, and, and, and everything. So these climate graphs are amazing tool to have and to be able to decipher them is very, very important. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.